All right, back in the garage. So, where I locked it, I was working on the interior a little bit. So I pulled out my uh, load-bearing broom and shovel. Looks like it's holding up okay. Actually, yeah, one of you guys left a good comment in the uh, last video. Use a little bit of double-sided tape, which I don't know why I didn't think about that. But I actually have a bunch, so I can do that. Uh, you see, I have some more screws. I wouldn't mind putting up the uh, visors. A few little things like that. Clean all this junk out. I took the carpet to work. It was, it was pretty rough, but I mean it's clean. It's still damp, unfortunately. And uh, on the driver's side, where you kind of step your foot on all the time, it's it's a little wore out, but eh, whatever. It'll do the trick. So I'll let that dry a little bit. Well, I clean everything out, and then I do have to start dismantling the other door. Oh, well, this one actually has the track and stuff in it. It makes life not too bad. So, start cleaning on this. I might pull the fuel tank inside. Unfortunately, it's taken a uh, turn for the worst weather-wise, and it's cold out, but I like this thing uh, kind of together. So, that's what I'm working on. So, check this out. Carpet's in. Eh, it's kind of ratty, but if you look far enough away, it looks all right. I uh, got the uh, visors in and stuff. A little light on stuff so it's pretty good here all cleaned up uh, I dismantled the old door so uh, you know I pulled all the the mechanism out the vent window uh, the handle and all that and I gotta pull the actual outdoor handle as well uh, which is kind of cool this door is so hammered up you can show up here but it's actually cracked all the way around so it's it's seen better days that sucker but uh, all the stuff that came out of it was in good shape, so I'll just kind of clean it up, spray a little bit of uh, WD-40 or something on it, and put it in. And basically, just got to make sure you do it the opposite way it comes apart. I should be able to actually yoink the uh, lock and all that out of that door. Because this thing actually came with a set of keys. So I'm thinking I should have door locks and everything. So that'll be pretty slick. That one I uh, lubed up before I put it all back together. So I'll do that. I'm not going to paint it. It'll just kind of be in primer, which, eh. It is what it is. But that'll be good. The carpet's still a little damp on the edges. Unfortunately, I'm hanging in the garage. It's so cold on the floor. It'll take forever to dry, so I'll have to dry up here overnight. Yeah. Gas pedal hooked up. And then the heater controls. Unfortunately, a few of the little tangs are broken off, so I'll see if I can fix that. But, uh, yeah. And then I think before I go into that, I'm going to drag the fuel tank in, let it dry off, and I'll start working on that tomorrow. So there's the door all put together. That was a fair bit of screwing around. I tried filming some of it, but it's probably gonna look terrible. But I mean, window goes up, window goes down. I gotta put a few screws in here just to hold the glass in. Yeah, it is what it is. And then these, they're all kind of bent out of shape and stuff, but that'll basically just kind of sandwich down like that. And it'll look just fine. Now these actually, I mean, the Part of the floor came out with it. Well, I was trying to take them apart because they were so the floor was so rusty. But uh, I'm not gonna do that just yet because I don't know the cart might have to kind of fold around and do a few things. But it's actually not really held down too well on this thing. Uh, it's cut out where the seat is, so somebody deals. So I put the fuel tank in. I can you can put the seat in once I'm done there. The carpet can still move around. It's only I guess held in by those little strips. Yeah, seems a little crazy, but Chevy didn't want to overthink it, I guess. So I'm probably going to do something. I don't know what I'm going to do for a shifter here. If I can manipulate the column somehow or do something. Uh, otherwise, I do have like a ratchet shifter. I might just kind of rinky-dink put that in just so it has something. So I might have to, you know, fold the carpet over, drill a hole, do whatever I'm going to do. But I think that's it for tonight. I'm going to drag that fuel tank in and let it thaw out because it's all full of snow. Be back out tomorrow. I'm making progress on this thing. Ah, I kept working. But, uh, jam the fuel tank in, it'll sit in here overnight. It's not too bad, it's a pain getting this little rubber o-ring and stuff in there by myself, but otherwise, it's all screwed in. This is actually the wrong tank, it came with the truck. The, the one that was in the truck had a big rust hole, for some reason, like right there, which I thought was weird, but whatever. So this one on the other side, if you can see right on my fingers, there's two little vent lines, so it doesn't have it on this tank. So this one, I guess, must have like a vented cap. But it's in, it works. So the plan is going to be pull the sender out 
and then I'll have to add another tube in for a return and then I should be able to hang the electric fuel pump in it and then I'll just have to run kind of two lines down. I'll probably just use those two grommet holes right there. I might even use some of these lines. We'll see how crazy I want to get. Down up in the motor and I'm kind of taken care of. And then just got to run 12 volts to it, but that's that's simple. So yeah, the interior is basically together. It needs a seat and a fuel pump. And then, uh, yeah. But now I am done. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day. I'm going to try to work on the fuel system. So, I've got this kind of universal in-tank pump. Uh, I pulled out the sander that was in the tank. It's seen uh, better days. The float is non-existent. So then I went out to the backyard. And I pulled the sender out of the other tank, which is a uh, slightly better shape, I guess. So the plan, this pump, I just put the sock on, is kind of going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to have to about mark it where I want, zip that off, clamp that on, run the wires up and out. Uh, that should be good. Then I have to do a return, which this has like a little boss in it right there. So I'm going to drill a hole. And then I have this, which is just kind of 5 16 tube. Uh, run it in somewhere around like that, solder the top, and then it should be perfect. I'll probably put like a coat hanger or some mechanics wire to give this a little bit of support. Uh, it's kind of winging it, so we'll try that. Otherwise, I got a fuel filter and a few different kind of repair ends and stuff. So I'm hoping I can make it all work. So I'll get started on this, get this in the tank, and I should be able to reuse part of the existing fuel system by keeping this little nub on it. I don't know. First time doing it. We'll see how it goes. So, this is the sock I kind of cut off. So it did something about like that. So now the pump's on. It's a little sock. It just came with two little clamps and a piece of hose. So I did that. I put a piece of mechanics wire on it. I don't know if it needs it or not. It actually seems pretty sturdy. Uh, this is another piece of just tube I had. So I kind of put it in. I just flared the end and then just soldered it in. So I'm going to call that good enough. I got to extend these wires, obviously. Run them through here somehow, some way. I haven't said what I'm going to do there yet. But that's that. And then this will hook up to the rest of the fuel system. The existing one, anyways. Which uh, goes straight down. And then I got this. This is all a little jacked up. So I don't know if I can reuse that. But I might just put another, some rubber line in. I got the two grommets right there. Shunk! Go down. I got to run it over and up. Uh, probably go on the driver's side because I think the fuel rail is on the driver's side. So I'll get that sender in and uh, we'll carry on. Ta-da! It's in. I don't have the lock ring on and when the wires came through I just put some seal all stuff so it should be good. Uh, so anyways, that one, this line right here, goes straight down, takes an angle over and then it has a little barb on it. So I'll uh, just get some fuel injection line, which I have, and those special clamps. Have that go down into this Fuel filter, which again has these little repair line ends with these barbs. So fuel line clamp that on and then go up to the fuel rail. So you can see that's the in and that's the return. So that's 3 8 and 5 16 which I managed to get some of these. They're like repair ends. So same thing, I'll just make my own fuel line and then I actually have a 5 16 one. I'll run that back. So there. I'll run it back beside the filter and then it'll just have to come up through the floor where that grommet is up and then clamp onto that. Now I believe the, I mean, the return line shouldn't be as high pressure, I'd hope, I'd assume. So I'm going to put it all together. We'll just kind of see, I might have to put some power to it, get some fuel in it and see what exactly is going to happen. And then I also got to figure out here's one of these lines here. I don't know exactly what one it is. Oh, this one must be it. Fuel pump. So I got to get that. That's the trigger for the relay. So I got to get a uh, 12 volt switch, kind of heavy power, I guess, to the pump. And that's just going to turn it on. So that's the plan anyway. So I'll uh, line my back, get it kind of in place, uh, rinky dink. You guys can uh, judge me in the comments. Okay. So fair bit of progress. Uh, Got the sender all dialed in with the feed and return. Uh, just grounded it 
two bolt right there and I left a lot of extra cable there. That's just the power obviously. So I have to run that down and, and up under the carpet. Up front, I don't know if I showed you guys this or not, but you might get a second view. So here's the feed return. So they're on like with the factory style uh, fittings. This is little locks on it. I might see if my those will fit back on, but basically the same as the other one. You kind of just push the hose over and these ones to put clamps on because that's what it had. So that should be fine. Underneath, roll under here. So, kind of dark, but those are both lines that come back. And then the feed line, I used the fancy insulated P clamps. And uh, so that's fuel filter, same thing. And then the return, I just zip tied to the line. Ugh. And then over here, I basically zipped it around. That's the feed, that's the return, both through the floor with grommets. I'm done. This is the original lines, so I'll probably zip those off. But that's it. I'm hoping the fuel system's done. I'm hoping it uh, works. Kind of different way of doing it, but I don't know. Should be good. So I put that seal all stuff on the tank. Just to be on the extra safe side. I soldered it in and then that where the wires go through. So I kind of goosh that in there. So I got that set for a little bit. Go in and have a little something to eat. Come back out a little later. Probably clean up in the cab. Put the seat back in. I mean really the interior is kind of back together. Just gotta make sure I run that. Uh, 12 volts under the carpet that's it then i can start putting the the uh door seals and uh, the little kick plates back on the interior should kind of be ready to go uh then i think like it was just a little bit of wiring it's actually a short list all of a sudden i probably should double check make sure this fuel tank doesn't leak but yeah we'll wait till it's crunch time so i'll be back at it in a little bit well it turns out it wasn't supper time so I wrestled the seat in, pretty simple. I just bolted down front and back uh, on the outside. There's another few bolts on the inside, but in case I gotta take it out, uh, I won't go too crazy. I transferred over the old seat cover from the 57, because this seat's hammered, it's got no foam there. Uh, put the carpet over, I glued in the weather strip, and I just kinda put on these kicks. I used to use self-tappers, because it was all rotted out and stuff. So uh, when I put new floors in, there was nothing, uh, no holes drilled. So I'll show you kind of on this side. It's pretty simple. I mean, they just kind of, they fit over. And on the inside, just kind of peel it open. I just put a little bit of this, uh, literally weather uh, strip adhesive. Go it in there, kind of hold it. It'll tack up, it'll hold itself in place. That'll be good. And then I'll just kind of put this in place. A few tech screws and it's done. It looks pretty good. All right, well, I was back at it, uh, working on the car. Started putting the exhaust together. Uh, I didn't really do a lot of filming because it's terrible. I had a bunch of uh, two and a half and some three inch pipe left over. So I just kind of made it all work. So let's see here. Nothing too fancy. But uh, I had two mufflers and I kind of did two turn downs. That's at the cab, so that's kind of whatever. Uh, they're hanging down a little bit in the front. I have to do a little bit of screwing around to make sure I have them up against the manifolds. And on the one side, I had a Bunko 2 sensor, and when I took it out, all threads came with it. So, I'll have to drill a hole, put a new bung in. But that's a job for tomorrow. I think I'm done for tonight. And actually, probably this video. So I feel like I got a bunch of footage doing all the uh, interior and stuff. Pretty stoked on it. Worked out pretty good. It's all kind of back together. So that's it for me, that's it for this video. Tell your friends, uh, like the video, like, share, subscribe, all those things, leave a comment, I like those the best. And uh, I don't know, we'll see you guys on the next one. And hopefully, motor stuff, a few lines are run now, so battery in, do a little bit of last minute wiring. I don't know, we'll see what happens, maybe this thing will make a little bit of noise in the next week or so.